A binary counter is a chip that just counts 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, blah, in binary. There are several applications for this. One of them is if you take a counter and hook it into a decoder, you can activate devices one by one in a round robin. You can also use it for frequency division, because if you have four bits, then this one's going to change every time you say count. This one's going to change half as often, a quarter as often, an eighth as often. So you can do that too. Many different applications. The 74 series 163 is a 4-bit binary counter. The reason it's not 8 bits is it also has the capability to directly parallel load a starting value or a current value. So if all you want to do is to be able to count, then it would be better to get a different chip that just has eight output bits. I mean, unless you only need four. But this one has the benefit of being able to set the value in a single operation at any time. So it's got the pins A, B, C, and D. These are the parallel load pins. So these are the input data pins. And D is the most significant. So D, C, B, A as a binary number is the way the chip lays it out. So D, C, B, A would be the actual binary number. QA through QD are the outputs. This is your actual counting, your current 4-bit result. This is a clocked chip, so it has a clock signal, clock pin. It's active high rising edge, so when it goes from low to high, it'll perform an operation. It has a clear. The clear is active low, and it only works with the clock signal. So even the clear is synchronous. It's not asynchronous. You can't clear it any time. You have to set clear to low to clear it and then do another clock pulse. So everything in the entire chip requires the clock pulse. You've also got load, which is also active low. Load on the clock pulse will set the outputs to the inputs. It'll basically let you put any value into the register. And then of course VCC and ground. But the three remaining pins are the interesting ones. You've got ENP, ENT, and you've got RCO. ENP and ENT are both enable signals. It's two different enable signals. Both of them have to be on for it to count. And you're thinking, why in the world are there two different enable signals? The reason is chaining and RCO ripple carry out. So this is enable P and enable T. I don't know why P and T, but ripple carry out. So your chip is going to count from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1, like so. Your carry is going to go high there. In other words, there's no carry until you're full, until it's reached the maximum value. And then what happens is it, sends, it, it, it sets this output to say, the next time I count, I'm going to overflow. If you only need a 4-bit counter or less, you can use as few bits as you want. It's not going to matter. But if you only want up to 4 bits, then you don't even do anything with the carry pin. You set both of these to high and you pulse the clock and you're counting. But... If you want to chain this, if you want to take two of these to make an 8-bit counter, then you have to do something with this carry. So when this is 1111, the next time the clock pulses, it's going to go back to zero, and this signals the next chip in the line that it should count. So if you have two of these chained as an 8-bit counter, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So the first chip in line, I'm putting it on the right now because it's the least significant. So now we go 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So this one, the next time it counts, will overflow. And what we want is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So each time the first chip in line overflows, the next one should count one single time. And then it should not count again at all until this one overflows again and then this one counts. If this is confusing, think about a clock. Think about your minutes and your hours. Or think about seconds, minutes, and hours. When the seconds go from 0 to 59 and then back to 0, that's one minute. So your minute counts up one time. Every time the seconds go all the way around, you count one minute. Every time the minutes go all the way around, you count one hour. So it would be a seconds chip, a minutes chip, an hour chip in that analogy. So that's what this is. So what you do is pretty neat, elegantly simple. You take this rip carry and you attach it to one of the enable signals. So one signal is the actual enable, as in you hook one enable pin to all your counters and you turn on or off the counter because you've got multiple stacked together, chained together. So three chips would be a 12-bit counter. So you're turning on and off the 12-bit counter with one enable signal that's shared between all three chips. This one is chained. 
So you would go in the first chip would be just one. First chip, of course, you would just keep it on, and then you could enable or disable it with the other one, but this one you just tie it high to say count every time. And then it's RCO, you connect to an ENT. So that's your second chip. So your second chip has an enable signal, but also it's using the ripple carry out of the previous chip as its enable signal. So the only time it'll count is that one single time that the previous chip is at 1111 and about to overflow. When it pulses, the first chip resets to zero, turns its ripple carry off, but at the same time, this one said, well, the ripple curry was just on. It doesn't matter that it's turning off. It's internals. Remember, these are clocked chips. So during the setup time, right when the clock pulse hits, it's ENT from the previous RCO had been high. So it's going to count once, and then it'll stop until it goes high again. And then the, your third chip, the RCO from that chip, goes to the ENT of the other chip, and then the last RCO in line, you ignore because it, it, it's useless. So that's nothing. So that's how you chain them. So you have one enable and then the other one is for chaining. If you only use one chip, you tie both of these high or to an enable signal or just one of them to an enable signal. It doesn't matter. It depends on if you need an enable signal. Maybe you just want to have it counting all the time. And the purpose of the enable signal is so that you hook it up to a clock. So instead of having to turn on and off your clock, you just turn on and off the chip because turning on and off the clock is not going to be good for everything else that uses the clock, or you'd have to pass it through some sort of transistor to cut it on and off with a pull-up or pull-down resistor at that point. So that's why chips have enable signals, so you can just turn on and off one chip. But that's how this works. So you can parallel load if you want. If you don't want to parallel load, then you just don't hook up A, B, C, D. You, you tie load high to make it not on. And then, you know, on boot up, on boot up you have clear low, and then after the first clock pulse, you can tie clear high and it'll just count forever and ever and ever. And that's only if you need it to start at zero. If all you care about is the fact that it's counting and you don't care when it starts, you just care that it's counting in round robin and that's all you need, then you don't even need to do anything with clear. So there you go. So now a quick demonstration. So I've got a five volt supply. The oscilloscope is providing my clock signal, which I've got set at three hertz. There won't be anything on the screen. It's just generating a square wave because it's real easy. And then here's my chip. So over here, I've got the four output bits and the ripple carry on the side. So the clock pulse is on, but I've got clear low. So every single clock pulse, it's clearing. If I turn the clear to high, you'll see it begins counting. So it's just it's just count, count, count. And you'll notice every time it goes to 1111, the ripple carry turns high for just that one. So every time the ripple carry goes high, the next chip in line, if there is one, will count one single time. So if I set the load signal to low, here I've got 0011 on my switches, and if I change the switches, then every time I change the switch, and the clock pulses, it's going to change what value is being loaded. So it loads on the clock pulse. And if I set clear, then it's going to clear. And it's loading and clearing at the same time, so clear is taking priority. And if I turn clear back off, it'll load again. And then if I turn load off, it'll start at that value. So let me load and then start it. And you can see that it loads and then starts counting from where you loaded. So that's if you want the load functionality. And then the clear, again, if I set the clear, it happens on a clock pulse. It doesn't immediately happen. It waits for a clock pulse and then it counts. So it's a counter. Congratulations. And you can see like most of the 74 series chips, the old BJT based TTLs, it consumes a few milliamps. So for low power consumption, you're going to want to use your modern 4000 variants or something based on CMOS anyway. But if you've got the power to spare, then it's a perfectly functional chip. So now I have to go argue with YouTube that this is not an early education video just because I taught counting. So while I do that, I'll be seeing you.